What is up, everybody? How's it going? And welcome to the show, Quest for Dough. I'm your host, Cody Pritchett, and I'm excited to get to let you guys know everything that's new and happening with the podcast. So as you can tell, the name is different. It is now Quest for Dough. And the reason because of this is, you know, I have had a lot of fun putting on this podcast and I've had a lot of good people reaching out and curious as to like the next steps, you know, what I learned and a lot of things. And as I've been doing this, I realized, you know, how great would it be for everyone, you know, no matter what you're interested in or doing, you can find a podcast or you can find someone else with that same quest and you can see kind of the things that they've learned from it and what they've done and their journey to get where they are. So that being said, I'm starting this podcast called Quest for Dough. I even got myself a little jingle like you heard at the beginning. Um, But what I want to do is I want to interview people, like I said, at the beginning of the journey. So, you know, whether you're starting a new business, you know, you just started a new software company, you're building an app, you started a retail store, you started an e-commerce business. Um, I want to bring you on and I want to interview you in your steps right now in your process and get to know, you know, what led you to get you to where you are in your next steps. And then I want to continually, continually interview you going on. But not just that, you know, if this is your first year being a real estate agent, if this is your first year, you know, in medical school, and, you know, it's been a crazy journey, and you want to explain to people, or do you just want to get your story out there and help other people understand and know, you know, what it's like, to be where you're at. I have a brother-in-law who's in medical school, so maybe I'll bring him on. Um, but then throughout, you know, the year and the years, my goal with this podcast is to hopefully find people that are, you know, the next Bill Gates or not, or just your average Joe. But, you know, they can look back on our episodes over the next three years and be like, wow, when I started this business, you know, my first podcast with Cody, look where I was at. You know, there was a lot I didn't know. There was a lot I had to learn. There was a lot that I just flat out failed at or these things I did right. Um, and so, you know, whether you're in the finance industry and you're listening to that po- this podcast because you've been following me along with my hedge fund, um, I'm still going to be giving updates on the fund that I started. So, you know, it's the beginning of the year, my last one, I kind of went over how it was hard, but I'm excited going forward. You know, the fund has been up for four months now, and I will continuously give updates on that fund. Um, so in the episode, it will just be like, you know, Quest for quest for Doe, episode 30, Proven Capital update. Um, or my other episodes will just be following along people. But even like if you're a sport athlete, like if you're in high school, and, you know, you have a couple division one offers, you know, I would like to interview you and see kind of what your thought process is right now and what you expect going forward. And then I want to continue in, continuing, continue interviewing you, sorry, and see what it's like, you know, your first year of college, what the practices are like, your second year, do you want to go pro? What's your goal? You know, and then maybe you get to the point where you go to an NFL or NBA combine and you go play summer league and we can follow back on this quest, all your thoughts throughout the process. So I started this podcast as like a journal for me and for my fund and I've really enjoyed it. And a lot of people have also found a lot of answers to questions through it. And so you know, not everyone wants to start their own podcast or has the time or can figure it out. But since I've already done that and I've already figured it out, I would like to bring on anyone that might be interested, um, you know, in, in coming on. And even if you're not in Utah close to me, you know, reach out to me on Instagram or send me an email um, and I can I can get you, I, I figured out how to call in so someone can call in and I can have you on the podcast but I'm really really excited the name quest for dough you know 
it was just kind of something that came about. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, money or like a quest to become a millionaire, you know, just like getting this bread, um, you know, let's get this bread or whatever it be, you know, whatever your quest is and whatever you're trying to achieve, I want to help you track that. And so, yeah, I'm really excited about this. If you have any suggestions or people that you want me to interview, say, you know, someone who like just started a company and you know that like that's what they're working on 24 7 but you think it has a lot of potential or you just think it's really interesting you know introduce them to me or reach have them reach out and i would love to bring them on start following their journey or their quest to to the dough um and on this first episode actually i'm going to bring on a guest his name is michael taylor he's he's a good friend of mine since high school since before high school as long as i can remember since like fourth fifth grade so we've been really good friends and um i'm gonna bring him on and something the reason i wanted to bring on michael taylor is he is someone that is very good at understanding how to get someone's why out you know how to be like what is my purpose why am i doing the things i am and he's kind of taken that to another level and he's starting to work for companies, helping them find their whys and their reasoning for things. And there's a lot of other stuff that he's good at and great at helping people understand. But I'm going to bring him on here and interview him. And we're going to go over kind of just, he's going to help me understand my why, but I'm also going to go through his quest and he'll be the first one to interview and kind of get this thing started um but yeah i mean there's so many things that people go through that 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 could come on this podcast for any given reason you know even like like a girl who's about to be a mother for the first time that's a journey that's a quest and i would love to interview someone and bring them on and be like hey you're about to be mom what do you expect interview you two months later and be like how's how's the mom life there's a lot of things that can be be on this podcast and it's really exciting um also another thing is this is on youtube so i'm now putting these on youtube so i'm filming this and if you're watching on youtube what's up um that way just a way to get more views and if people are interested in what the people look like or they want to see it they can go and watch it on youtube um youtube you can just search quest for dough podcast and it should come up hopefully um but yeah so as you can tell i'm really excited I got a name, I got a jingle, um, and I'm just excited. I'm excited to meet people. I'm excited to hear people's quests. I'm really, you know, I feel passionate about things when I get passionate. And, you know, I really felt like the reason this whole thing started is because, you know, I felt I could start a hedge fund and figure it out and make it successful without going the traditional way. And so that's what I did. And it's worked and I'm to the point where I'm at and I'm learning a lot. There's a lot of ups and downs. Um, But I know there's a lot of people out there also that are, you know, just taking their own way, not the non-traditional way or the traditional. But there can be a lot of cool stories out there and a lot of people that are going through, you know, doing a lot of crazy things. So I'm excited for this and... That's pretty much what I have to start now, except for I'm going to bring on my friend Michael Taylor. And so I'm just going to cut to our interview right after this. So we'll talk then and keep listening. Thanks. Bye. Okay. I'm now here with Michael Taylor. Say what's up, Mike. What's up, guys? How's it going? Um, I'm really excited. Mike came over. We've been talking. I'm really excited about what he's doing and the quest that he is on for his dough. <laughs> um, but I'm going to pass it over to him kind of to explain a little bit about what he's doing right now. And yeah. Yeah. Um, so I come, as you know, I come from the door to door industry. Um, and right now I'm currently working with a, a regional, a company called caliber consulting with him and, and recruiting with him. And, and then I'm doing a lot of enrollment into personal development and coaching for a company that has made a huge Im- impact in my life. Um, they're called abundant. 
But okay. yeah, I've been able to, I'm enrolling um, clients for them and, and companies to have them come in and, and work with them. Okay. So you said you're starting to work with Abund and, and enrolling people. So explain to me a little more or the people a little more about like what you do for your job or what you're, you're doing. Yeah. Um, so basically, you know, coming from door to door sales, I was really good. I mean, I was known in my industry for being able to recruit. So recruit people into the opportunity to go knock doors and, and make money. Right. And, you know, that was fun and it, and it served me for a while. But um, now I'm what I'm doing is I'm recruiting people into their vision. I'm recruiting people into really doing what really matters to them. Um, and, you know, it's been amazing. But basically what I do is is I talk to sales leaders, business leaders about what they're doing now and why they aren't fulfilled. And I'm a big believer that and I've seen it with so many people that salespeople are the most abused individuals emotionally, right? Um, you know, because of the rejection that they handle and um, the exception or the not being accepted from their peers or whatever for what they're doing and trying to, you know, make something out of themselves. And I found a lot of them just aren't happy. They're not fulfilled. And so what I do is I have those conversations with them to find out why and put action plans in place through that, through the company, through Abundant to really find out what they really want out of life and, and really how they can go get it. That's awesome. I just want you listeners to know Mike is like the ultimate like sales guy. Like not like in the way that Mike can sell you anything because he's so good at understanding you and your reasons for why that he's done really good at door to door. And you know, knowing you, I know you could do door to door and continue selling and make a lot of money on sales. Mm -hmm. And so over the past, I don't know, six months a year that you've transitioned into not selling into consulting it's a big it's a big jump for you and so kind of explain what led you to make that decision and kind of get into those details because you know your quest could be like oh i want to be the best seller in the world but you've chosen to help these sellers or other people to understand their vision Mm -hmm. and impact deep people on a deeper level i kind of want to know more why is that yeah um so i think i got into door to door for the same or into selling door to door and building teams and door to door for the same reason that a lot of people do it. Um, it was to a way to, to make money and to potentially do something that I thought I could be good at. And, and I was good at it and that's what kept me in it. Um, and I was really competitive and I really liked that about it is I could go out and compete. And, you know, I love being out going out and winning, you know, our sales competition and incentives and, having our office be the top office and being the top rep was something that really, you know, drove me year after year. And, you know, there was this one year after I'd been the top rep, I had been the top manager one year. And then this last year, my last year really knocking doors, I said, you know what, I'm going to be the top manager and the top rep and then I'll be happy. Right. And then that was like my next thing of like, yeah, then I'll, then I'll be happy. And so I went after it and I did it and same thing. I like caught myself after that, like looking for the next thing that I could go achieve. And that's when it started to click to me. It's like, when does this end? Right. You know, when am I going to make enough money to be happy? When am I going to achieve enough to be happy? And that's where I found this. I actually, it was perfect timing. I found this group um, through one of my my buddies that was in our company. He had a massive transformation after going through them. He's like, you got to go check this out. And so, you know, I paid the money to go out and I flew to San Francisco and I went through this, you know, coaching course. But basically I found out that I was so focused on achievement that I wasn't really focusing on what makes me happy and I wasn't fulfilled in what I was doing. And that it potentially, if I kept going like that through my entire life, that I would one day find out that it just never was enough my whole life. So I wasn't enjoying the journey at all. And I definitely wasn't doing what I truly love. And so that's what kind of catapulted me to go, you know what, like I got to start focusing on focusing on the things that make me happy and that are going to make me fulfilled. And as long as I do that, then the money will follow instead of me going, oh, let me make a ton of money and then I can do what I can love. Let me do what I love and trust that the money will follow. And so that's what kind of started this, this really transformation for me. And it's been an amazing journey and I've, I've learned a ton about myself, but more importantly, I've, I've learned what I love about myself and the gifts that I have that I can bless the lives of others with and why that's way more important than any record or amount of money that I could ever make. And the amazing part about it is as I've jumped into this journey, I've, I've made more money, you know, than I had, than I had in the past. So I, it's just 
really give me a lot of confidence moving forward, knowing that if we do what we love, the money will follow. Right. I love that. And before um, this podcast, Mike came over and kind of helped me find my why. And there's a lot of great points he said. And so I kind of want to get over a little bit about what we learned and then just kind of how you help people understand their why, because I think it's great knowledge for people to understand. And people listening, you can apply these to your daily life or just think in these ways, you know, how Mike helps you to understand, you know, what you're trying to achieve um, and just apply it. But I'll give it to Mike. So kind of take us through some of the questions like you did with me earlier or what you, you know, how you help people understand their why or what they, what brings them happiness. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing for me is intention. Um, when you're having that meeting with somebody or when I'm having that meeting with somebody, my intention has to be to make sure that I leave them better off than I found them. Right. Um, I believe that's when a, what an abundant leader does is he leaves people and he leaves situations better off than he found them. You know, and that might've been something that we all learned when we were little is like, well, you know, you're camping and leave the campground better off than you found it. Right. But that's a, that's a really important principle um, for me day to day with every conversation and interaction that I have. But it's coming into that, that meeting with you. I just want to make sure that I left you better off than I found you and that I, you know, helped you really find what you love. But really what it comes down to for me is it's helping people see where they are right now and, and if they're happy. And so asking the questions to, to go like, okay, where are you at now? What has been good this past year? What have you enjoyed about this past year? Right. And having them really connect to those emotions and the positive things that have happened this year. I think, like, I think we should just kind of say that like you want the person listening to, to reflect on that, on, to reflect on that themselves. That makes sense. So like that, like how you started with me, like you were just saying that you want to, what was it you want to reflect on your last year or two years and find a happy Mm -hmm. moment? Yeah. So, um, I would, you know, if I were one of the viewers, um, if I was really in, in your shoes, I'd ask myself, okay, what were some of the most impactful or meaningful experiences in my life this last year, 2019? And I would take some time, I would put some music on to really, really think deeply on that of like, what were my most meaningful experiences this last year? And the reason why I start, you know, I, I, I think it's important for us to ask that question is um, if they were meaningful, there's, there's something to learn from that. It was a moment and, and you can ask, you know, where was I the happiest this last year? What were some of the moments that I was the happiest this last year? And I'm a big believer that success leaves clues and success is happiness. Right. So we should learn from our happiness and find the clues of why we were happy and help that catapult to our future. So if you can look back on this last year and remember some of those experiences and ask yourself, okay, you know, this was the experience that I was happy this last year. This was the experience that was meaningful. And then ask yourself why, right? So why was that so meaningful? Who was there? What were you feeling? What were the emotions as you were in that moment? And just ask yourself, you know, how can I have more of that this next year? What does it need to look like? And yeah, I think that's just really what it's all about is just getting to know them. You know, what I've learned is in order to influence people, you need to understand what influences them. Right. But in order to influence ourselves, we need to know what influences us as well. Right. Something I love. So I want to share is Mike helped me realize. So my experience over the last year, when I thought about that, you know, what brought me great joy. My answer was watching my son grow up. So Stance, my little boy just turned two, and in his first year, you know, well, this from year one to two, he started walking. He was able to say, Dad, pretty much say, I love you, and, you know, give me hugs and kisses. And those experiences for me were just like, those are the most important experiences that mm-hmm. I experienced because I just love him. <laughs> yeah. But that was mine. Okay, and so once you help them realize those experiences, what's kind of next? Um, you know, I, th- I think it's just, I think for, for people, it's just really connecting to the future of the person you want to be. I, since I've been really young because of m- my father, he always taught me to visualize like really what I want out of life. Right. And so I think it's really important to see the future of really what it is that you want. I think a lot of times we tell ourselves, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur or I want to own a business or I want to be a mom or I want to be a dad or whatever it may be. But not only do we need to think about that, 
but we need to like really see it in our head. We need to really like take time to close our eyes and see what it will feel like to be living in that moment that we want. Um, you know, for me, it was being able to impact people on a daily basis to be able to have deeper conversations with them, to be able to leave them better off than I found them. And as I visualized myself actually doing that in the future, I could feel those emotions of what it would feel like. And that drove me to actually make it happen instead right. of just going, you know, like, yeah, that's what I want. And I hope it happens. Um, you know, I, I've heard, you know, multiple times and don't, you know, don't quote me on this, but right. I'm, I've heard that this is true is that our subconscious and our conscious doesn't know the difference between reality and what we're actually imagining. And the reason why I believe that is, you know, anytime we're stressed about something that's going to happen, you can totally feel those feelings of it actually happening. You know, anytime you've had a really lucid dream and you wake up and you know, you, you're falling and you really thought you were going to die and you wake up and you're like, Oh, I'm good. But you really thought you were dying. You really thought you were falling. Right. And it's just as powerful as we think of the positive things in the future of like becoming a father or running a business or being able to give back to our communities and be able to impact people. As we visualize ourselves doing those things, like, in detail it's amazing how in the present moment we can really feel how powerful those moments will be and so the more that we can really see ourselves doing what we really really want to do out of life i think the easier it is to be driven in the moment because we've kind of had a little taste of what it feels like it's true as you help me find mine you know reflect on those experiences and just helping me realize what i want to do to truly feel that inner presence always. Yeah. It's very eye opening. And I love, you know, I love what you're doing and everything that you help people achieve because I don't want to jump ahead, but eventually I want to tell you guys kind of what he helped me understand um, because I feel like it's going to help me going forward. But something I wanted you to, well, I was talking to Mike about my current situation in life. As you guys have been following along, you know, I started the fund um, and it's exciting time, but it just kind of slowed down as I'm trying to build a track record and stuff. But as I've been talking to Mike and realizing, okay, what do I truly want? What makes me happy in the present moment? Um, there's a lot. I don't want to jump ahead, but um, I realized what I'm trying to to achieve in my future is something that I don't need to wait on. Kind of hit on that point. So I'm trying to do so many things right now or like trying to build a, something like with proven capital that I'm probably butchering this because you explained it to me and I felt it, <laughs> but <laughs> you helped me understand that like looking to the future, kind of how can I explain that? Yeah. Sorry, so, I'm butchering it. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, so our thoughts create emotion, and our emotion creates motion, and our motion is what our action is, right? So thoughts create emotion, emotion creates, emotion creates action, and action is what where we get our results. So, you know, I probably should have explained that before I talked about the visualization, but basically that's why it's so powerful, is if you think about any action or any step that you've ever taken in the past, it all stemmed from an emotion and that emotion stem from a thought, right? So as you look forward and all of us look forward into like, you know, you felt a little bit about of your past of presence and how you really want to be more present in the future that created a thought, which created an emotion. And I asked a question, which created an emotion and that emotion now, you know, can go, they say your emotion creates motion can go into action and that action creates results. And I know this is kind of off track a little bit, but this works for negative thoughts as well is our negative thoughts can create negative emotions. And those negative emotions can create action, which creates negative results. So the more self-aware we are of our thoughts and our desires, that's where everything changed for me is a lot of us are kind of just going through life, like just kind of stumbling through, we're kind of just gliding through and we're not aware of our thoughts. And I always say, be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. <laughs> right. Be careful what you think about because you just might get it because what you think about is truly what you become because of the emotions and the actions that stem from that. Every action that we do comes from an emotion, right? Right. And so if we can be more self-aware of our emotions on a daily basis and we can learn to control them and to be more present to them and to not suppress them, because a lot of people like to suppress the emotion, 
But it, it, I always say if you suppress an emotion, it's like an alarm clock on snooze. You suppress it and you put, a, you put an alarm clock on snooze, it's just going to come back and come back. And, keep, and as long as you keep snoozing, it's always going to keep coming back. So you have to acknowledge an emotion that you're feeling. If it's stressed, if it's anxiety, if it's excitement, whatever it is, just address it and feel it and, and ask yourself, you know, why is this here? Why am I feeling this? And appreciate it. And go, okay, I understand, you know, I'm feeling really stressed. And instead of going, no, I'm not stressed, I'm positive, I'm happy. Like, that's the person I used to be is like, I push everything out because I feel right. like I was really positive. And the problem with that is I kept suppressing the stress. I kept suppressing the stress or maybe it was negativity. And so I think as, as we can really address our emotions and appreciate them and know that our body is trying to do us a favor, it's trying to warn us, right, for right. potentially being harmed. Or if we're going to public speak and... We feel stressed and scared and we don't want to think about it. Our body's trying to protect us, but to go, okay, I'm feeling this, I'm stressed. You know, this is why, you know, and tell yourself I shouldn't be stressed. Like all, everything will work out just fine. Thank you for warning me. Like I'm emotions. I'm glad you're here, but I got this one, you know? Right. And it might sound a little crazy, but as I've been able to kind of have that self-talk of like, and being really aware of the things that are going on in my mind in my mind, I've really been able to control my outcomes a lot more instead of just hoping that life works out. Right. Something along those lines, um, we were talking and I, I told you kind of how like over the past year or past three or four months, you know, I've kind of been the stay at home dad because my wife has been the one running our bridal store mm-hmm. and I've been trading at home. So I've been at home stance and I haven't had a job like where I go in and work nine to five for probably a little over a year now. And because of that, an emotion that's been building up to me that my company rise is like, I've just found a lot of like, like boredom, but like I'm missing connection. Um, and so, sorry, my wife just walked in through the door as we're recording and I'm like, be quiet. And as you can hear my dog running around, <laughs> but <laughs> what I've realized is I miss connecting with people. And I miss the the connection I have on a daily basis. Like I'm a, I'm a talker. I'm I really like hanging out with friends, and I honestly don't talk to anyone anymore um, because I don't see them. And as we were talking about this, and the reason I'm saying all this is because you know something I really enjoy doing is talking with people. But like I also love helping people achieve their dream because I'm a big dreamer and I I like when other people have dreams, but what Mike did was like, look what you're doing is this podcast <laughs> quest for dough. Um, I thought this would just be fun and you know, something I could start, but Mike was explaining to me that this comes from like, it's something deeper inside that always shows. Mm-hmm. And like, this is what came from it. Kind of explain what you said to me there. Yeah. Like it, that action, you know, most likely came from an unmet need, which that unmet need could have been connection. Right. So you had this emotion or this thought of lack of connection, which created this emotion in you of like, you know, I, I'm not connecting with people. I'm not connecting with people. And, and you know, you, you finally acknowledged it and said, okay, I got to do something about this because I'm not connecting with people. And it drove you to, to take that action. Your emotion led to the motion of starting this without even knowing it was all happening. And so, yeah, that's kind of where we went back. As I said, you know, where did this stem from? And to look back, it's it, that he had that unmet need and that need is now met. Of like, okay, I can connect with people this way, but we all have our own unmet, unmet needs. And so we need to ask ourselves, okay, what are my unmet needs that are causing me to act in a certain way or not act in a certain way? And as we're more self-aware of those, we can start to control our outcomes. We can start to control, not necessarily control ourselves, but control just what's coming through and why it's coming through. Right. You have so many good things to say. It's, you're so fluid with your words. It's really impressive. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, but yeah, like... This show, Quest for Doe, you know, it's been something I've been really excited about. And yeah, you hit it right on the nose. It's because of the connection with people. And then I also, one of my deeper things is I really like helping people achieve what mm-hmm. they want. Kind of like you help people achieve their vision. Um, you know, same thing, but I like seeing people achieve their dreams in a way. Yeah. But that's what I, that's the reason I started this podcast because I want some to follow people along their journeys. And so, like, I'm following you. So the thing is, this isn't just a one-time thing. You're giving good advice. You know, 
I want to know, Mike Taylor, why you chose to do this, which you kind of explain, but I want to keep following along and kind of, you know, in six months or a year, we're going to continue with this and see where you're at. But that being said, so what, like, what are you doing right now in this moment? And kind of what do you envision over the next six months to year? Like taking, a, how, where do you imagine taking this, the, you know, with abundant and helping people and all that stuff? Yeah. Um, so as I really dug deep down after going through that journey of achieving at a really high level and wanting to really be more fulfilled and filled up, I had to look back and go, okay, what are the experiences in the past that I, you know, felt that, that I really felt that I was fulfilled and I was happy. And a lot of that came from giving to others. Um, and I heard a quote, I, I met, you know, a guy named Randy Garn, a lot of, he's probably the most connected individual I've ever met, but he said something that just pierced my heart and he said, um, and it was, it came back down to giving, but he said the, if you do as much as you can for as many people as you can without expecting anything in return, that's when life starts clicking for you. You know, um, you might've heard of the law of reciprocity. It kind of goes along with that. But what was so powerful about that for me is I look back on the past when I was the happiest and it was when I was giving to somebody whether it was my time, whether it was love, whether it was, you know, something tangible without expecting anything in return. And so, uh, you know, I'm not saying that this next year I want to just give everything, you know, and, and not make any money or anything. But I, I also want to make sure that all my interactions that I have on a daily basis this next year and moving forward are to leave people better off than I found them without expecting them to do something for me or to give me something. So what's funny is, um, a lot of the person I want to become is outside of work. It's as I'm going to meet with a client, as I'm, you know, at the grocery store or wherever, is just really trying to be in tune, you know, I, um, with, with my Heavenly Father of like, who do I need to talk to today? Who do I need to be in contact with today? And what do I need to say to them to leave them better off than I found them and impact them at a deeper level? So that's one of my biggest values this next year is to um, impactful giving. And by that, I mean, impactful giving of my time and, and, and resources or love or whatever they need in the moment. And I believe that as I do that, everything else will fall into place. Um, and so with, um, with abundant, some of them are, sorry, what was the, was that, that kind of answer your question? Yeah, no, I mean, that was great. I was just curious. So like with abundant kind of like you answered, you know, what you want to see yourself doing this year personally, but like, with abundant wise like where do you like your career Mm -hmm. part of the two yeah um so what i really and we hit a little bit on this but yeah i'm glad you glad you brought it back up with abundant you know we're working with a lot of sales leaders um you know we're working with some of the top reps at salesforce um one of some of the top individuals at square um and these really big tech companies and you know I feel like there's a lot of people out there, not just in the tech industry, but that are in sales and business that are just unhappy. And so I just want to spend a lot of my time finding those people that really need to find their deeper why and that are really looking for somebody to kind of guide them um, into the journey and to step into their future vision that really brings the most fulfillment and happiness. Right. So yeah, that's, that's basically what I do is I enroll people into the program. So I contact these people. I have a conversation with them. We talk about their why we talk about where they're at and it's really just needing to come from that serve first mindset and earn second. So every phone call I have, I have to show up with that type of mentality to not expect anything in return to just try to serve them and know that whether they want to step forward and work with abundant or not, I left them better off and I found them in that conversation and what's been amazing is as I stepped into that mentality, it's, I'm just truly trying to leave people better off. I'm really helping people really just trying to solve a problem that they may have and then helping them see how abundant can really help them step into their future. So I'm doing that as well as with caliber. Like I I explained, I'm helping bring more individuals into their, into their program caliber. You know, it's a local door to door company that are really doing amazing things. They've really focused on the mentality of abundance and knowing that there's enough reps to come around and enough employees to come around. And um, I'm really motivated to, to help them grow and to be pushing, you know, reps and guys that are still in door to door to work with some of, some of the guys over there because they really have something special. That's awesome. I know you're doing what you love because every time we talk, I mean, we went to high school together. 
mm-hmm. and I feel like you're someone that understands me and I understand you because you've always wanted to make an impact. Mm-hmm. You've always thought of something bigger. And it's not just, I like, like, it's not money. It's not you want to make an impact by making a billion dollars. It's you want to make an impact in people's lives by, like, helping them find their why, which is what you're doing. And it's it's been so cool watching you and watch you grow into this. And, like, I've like the thing is you've done so good at sales. And everyone that I talk to is like, I don't know how Mike does it. But it's because you really do well at helping people understand their whys. And even if you're selling them... Um, you know, satellite TV, you help them understand why they need it. Yeah. <laughs> but you're yeah. so, you're really good at asking those types of questions. And I think it's awesome that you've realized it's not sales that you want to be good at that. And it's people. Mm-hmm. And it's cool watching you on this journey and you make this transition. Cause like I've seen you been doing these programs. And like you said, like I've seen you do so well. Uh, you know being a manager and sales and all this stuff but like this is kind of like what it was like oh Mike builds on himself and goes sales yeah. but now I see you transitioning to this sell pe- like not sell people like help people find their visions mm-hmm. and I know that you have found your why that you really have been like on a journey yeah and looking for this because that's the Mike I know yeah and so it's been cool seeing this and it's been fun um appreciate but, that it's just the beginning. And so, you know, I know I imagine you're going to learn so much. And so I do want to bring you on and keep following along with this. And like, yeah. just also the great insight. Cause I mean, the things you say or the things you've learned, like, and that you mentioned, like it's just so eye opening and such great one liners for the people can apply to their mm-hmm. lives. And so I'm excited for it. Thank you. Yeah. Me when, too. <laughs> when I was introducing you though, I was like, me and Mike have been friends for since, uh, high school and i was like actually since fourth or fifth grade i was like wait no that's not true mike hated me up until like <laughs> the <fifth> grade <laughs> Just kidding. me and mike did not like each other until like our freshman year no one knows why probably because of the exact same person and we just never actually knew each other but then we became best friends and then haven't looked back since but that's funny okay well i mean is there anything else do you want to say or that i mean use this as like your journal like a voice journal of kind of where you feel like you're at right now what you want to see or just something to like your future year self like maybe you want to say maybe that's putting you on the spot i don't know no <laughs> um you know i something that's been on my mind a lot lately is i i feel like they're i think everybody's a leader you know you don't have to be in business you don't have to be in sales you know a, a mother's a leader a father's a leader a neighbor can be a leader and I truly believe that there's two types of leaders. There's those who motivate people to do something and those who elevate people to do something. And I really, that's one of my big intentions this year specifically is that I make sure that I'm elevating people. Um, you know, and I, I think those who show up as a, a, a leader of heart and a love based leader, and it's easier to elevate people and, you know, people, people will never remember what we say, but they, they always remember what, you know, how, how they made us feel. And so I think whether you're listening to this and you are a leader or you're not, just leave all those interactions with people better off than you found them. And I think, you know, and I'm, I'm still on a journey, you know, I'm, I'm not, ex- right. you know, where I want to be yet. And a quest. And a quest, right. I'm on a quest. <laughs> um, but, but I know that if we really come in with the attention to elevate everybody instead of just motivate them, that's really what lasts. And that's really what has a, um, you know, a compound effect and a ripple effect for generations to come is if we really impact people and elevate them at a deeper level. So don't be afraid to ask strangers those deeper questions. You know, don't, don't be afraid to ask them why they feel the way that they do. And I think, you know, we are in the most, um, as they say, we're the most communicated generation through technology, right? Technologically, we are the most communicated in this generation, but we're also the most disconnected. Um, and we aren't communicating like, we should, we're not communicating um, as personal. We're not getting as deep. And I think it's affecting the generations to come. And so I think as us, we should be the leaders of communication of really being vulnerable and authentic of who we really are. Take the masks off and be who you are. Ask those questions, get to know people on a deeper level. And worst case, you'll feel better. (laughs) You'll feel happier and best case you'll impact them and leave them better off than you found them. I love it. I love what you said, because I feel like you have left me better the mm. moment you came. So you, you. Ach- you achieved that with me tonight. 
Thank you. I feel a lot better with you leaving than I did before you got here. Appreciate that. So one for one. <laughs> okay. Well, again, that's Michael Taylor. Um, he's a great guy. And um, thanks for coming on, Mike. And we'll be following up, you know, in yeah. six months, a year, when it be. But looking forward to it. Thanks for coming on. And we'll talk next time. Yep. Thank you.